Hi, I'm Todd Allen Lowe, and welcome back to Allen's Pantry. In this episode, we're going to be doing a little baking. Now, by no means am I a professional pastry chef or baker, but through the years of all the hotels and restaurants I've worked in, I have spent quite a bit of time in the bake shop with the pastry chef, and they've given me some wonderful recipes. The problem with their recipes, though, they give them to me in weight measurements, so I have to convert those recipes into volume measurements. Because most people at home don't have a scale to measure their food weight. So, for instance, one of the recipes is the sweet potato pound cake, which required a weight of flour. So what I do to convert that recipe, I'll just take the flour, we we'll put a vessel on the scale, and you want to make sure you zero out the scale. As you can see, I've torn away the weight of the vessel that I'm going to put the flour in, so I have, I'm an absolute zero, okay? So then I would just take the flour and put it in the vessel, bring it up to the specific weight that the recipe calls for. Okay, once I've hit that weight, then I'll take a precise measuring container, put that weight in a measuring cup, and that's the volume of that weight of flour. And then I convert the recipe accordingly. So, that being said, we're going to take this away. We've already got the batter working in the blender and the mixer here. Okay, so to start this recipe off, the thing that takes almost the most time is roasting of the sweet potato. Okay, so what I do is I take this potato, I wash it, wrap it in aluminum foil, put it in a 350 degree oven, and it takes about an hour and 15 minutes for it to be completely cooked. Once it comes out of the oven, we'll let it cool to handle, unwrap the foil, remove all of the skin, okay? And then we have the sweet potato pulp, which you see here. This is a small portion of it, okay? You wanna mash that up a little bit, okay? So once we've got that done, then we can start to measure out the rest of our ingredients, right? First thing we'll wanna do is cream the eggs and the sugar. Those are the first two ingredients that go in the mixer, right? So we wanna cream that very well till it's nice and smooth. Then we can start adding the rest of our wet ingredients, our vanilla extract. Um, the dry ingredients come at the end, okay? So we get that mixed up real well. Let's see what we got here. Okay. And while that mixer is working, you want to make sure that occasionally you stop the mixer, scrape down the sides of your bowl, Right, because you'll have a lot of dry mixture that'll be around the edges of the bowl. So you want to scrape that down into the batter so everything gets incorporated well. Okay, so we get that mixed up real well. You know, I love this recipe. It's just so comforting and when it's baking in the oven, the, the aroma just fills up the kitchen and it makes you hungry. Okay, so once we've got that well mixed, Right, we're gonna extract that batter out of the mixer. Now, here comes a little bit of the difficult part. You've got this kind of thick batter, and I'm using these mini bunt pans. So to get that batter evenly distributed in each one of these bunt pans can be a little tricky. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You could put it in a pastry bag, right? cut the tip and pipe the batter in, or what I've done is I put the batter in squeeze bottles so we can evenly distribute the batter in these pans. You don't want to get the batter to cover the middle of that bunt mold, okay? Now, even though this is a non-stick bunt pan, I'm still gonna use a little bit of cooking spray, so I wanna make sure these pop out, okay? So we're gonna spray the pan. Give it a nice liberal 
amount of cooking spray. Make sure you get in all those little crevices, especially that middle prong in the butt mold. You want to get all sides of that so it just pops right out. Okay? Very well. Now, this is a long cooking time. It takes about an hour and 15 minutes at 350 degrees. So you want to plan your day accordingly. I would do it when you have a nice relaxed time, not rushing, maybe your day off, a Sunday morning perhaps. It's a great brunch item, okay? So we're just going to fill those up about halfway. It's really going to rise up and you don't want it to rise up past that middle prong in the bunt mold. So let's go ahead and finish filling up these molds. And we already have some of these in the oven. I believe they're just coming out of the oven now. And I can smell it. If you had your smell vision on, you would really see what I mean. Very appetizing scent in the kitchen this morning. So while these are cooking, we're going to put together a little icing glaze. Let's get these in the oven and then we'll move on to that next ingredient. You see, it can be very tedious, but you want to be careful when you put this batter in. You don't want to get it up on the edges. You don't want to get it up above the middle prong in the mold. Okay. All righty. And if, if you have pastry bags, it might be a better method to just pipe it out of a pastry bag. Okay. All right, so we're only going to do about five of these. I'm not going to fill up all of the molds. I've got some just came out of the oven that we're going to be able to taste. All right, so this is ready to go in the oven. So we're going to set that aside and let's work on our glaze. We're going to be using some heavy cream. We're going to place that in our stainless steel heavy bottom sauce pot. You don't want to use an aluminum pan with this. Make sure it's a stainless steel and a heavy bottom. We've got some pre-sifted powdered sugar. We're just going to grab a whisk, start whisking that powdered sugar in. Okay. Then we have some fresh butter. That's going to drop right in there. It's already been measured out as per the recipe. Okay, a little bit of vanilla. Okay, we're just going to whisk that. We want to bring that up to a simmer. Okay, at this point we're going to put in our brown sugar. Drop that in there. Again, that's been pre-measured per the recipe. This is a fantastic recipe. I got this from a pastry chef that I worked with in St. Louis. And the first time that she made it, I told her, I, I have to have this recipe. This is just fantastic. I love it. Whisk that well together. Okay. And, it, and as soon as it comes up to a simmer, you know, we can give it a little more, a little more fire here. Just, as soon as it comes up to a simmer, it's good to go. And what really makes this recipe nice is when the bunt cakes are still a little bit warm from the oven and you pour this icing over them and you eat them right away, it's like heaven. It's a great item for a brunch menu, breakfast, or even a dinner dessert. You could pair some fresh berries with it. We're almost there. Yes, it's coming together well. Ah, oh, the, the aroma of those cakes that came out of the oven is just it's amazing. Okay. Just about there. You want to make sure the sugar is completely dissolved. All the butter has been melted. And bring that up to a low simmer.
Yeah, this glaze is just absolutely perfect. Nice and smooth. The smell is fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna set that on the side. We've got another dessert that we're gonna put together. And at the end of the show, we'll put the finished products out. And of course, we have to taste some of it. The next item that we're going to be preparing is a chocolate creme brulee. And again, this is a rather tedious recipe. It takes time. So do it when you have time and you can relax. You don't want to rush this recipe because it has to be done correctly or it just won't come out right. Okay, so let's clean up these ingredients. We've got a whole other set of ingredients that we need to bring out for the chocolate creme brulee. And this recipe, you're never going to forget it. It's awesome. Okay, so we're going to prepare one, another one of my favorite desserts. This is chocolate creme brulee. Creme brulee, of course, is a custard dessert, but I'm putting chocolate as a flavoring in it, and it'll have a burnt sugar crust on top. So to start off with the recipe, first thing we need to do is get some really good quality chocolate. Okay, we're going to put that in a stainless steel bowl over a simmering water bath. Now, we want to be very careful because water and chocolate do not mix. And once you get a drop of water in this melted chocolate, it will seize up and you've got to start over. Okay, while that's melting, we're going to start our custard base, which is egg yolks. So we're going to separate those eggs. Okay. So I only want the yolk for this recipe. Okay, so this recipe calls for four egg yolks. Oh, we've got a double yolk. It's my lucky day. Look at that. That doesn't happen very often. Wow. It's still the same amount of uh, yolk product, just two smaller ones. So we'll be fine with that. Okay, now we've got our yolks. Let's clean up my hands quickly. Okay, now we're gonna take our whisk. We're gonna add the sugar into the yolks. We wanna cream this mixture. This recipe also calls for a little vanilla extract. I already have the vanilla extract in with the heavy cream that's lightly coming up to a scald. You want to cream those egg yolks and sugar really well. Get that sugar to dissolve, become creamy. And how's our chocolate doing? It's almost, let's take a quick look at the chocolate. Looks like it's just about completely melted, right? At this point, I think we're just gonna turn off the burner and just let it sit over that hot water until we're ready to use it. Yes, that's beautiful, perfect. Yes, very, very nice. All right, so we continue creaming the sugar and the egg yolks. Get that nice and creamy. And by the way, don't get rid of the egg whites. Later on, maybe you'll make an egg white omelet. Or maybe you have another recipe that involves egg whites good protein. Okay, so you can see our, our cream is scalded now. It's started to come up to a simmer, right? We're going to turn that off. Set those egg whites aside. Save those for something later. Now what we want to do is temper the cream into the egg yolk and sugar mixture. We want to go a little bit at a time. If we dump this hot cream into these egg yolks all at once, it's going to end up curdling or cooking the egg yolk. And we don't want that to happen just yet. Okay, so we're going to take just a little bit at a time. And again, this is called tempering. Temper that hot cream in just a little bit at a time. There we go. Okay, very good. It's coming together nicely. Now one of the issues we're going to come into with this recipe is as we're 
whisking and tempering, we're incorporating a lot of air and air bubbles into this uh, custard, if you will. And we don't want those. So what we're gonna have to do is let this batter rest and all of that foam and air bubbles are gonna come rising up to the top. We're gonna wanna skim those off. Okay, all of our cream is tempered into our egg yolks very nicely. Now, it's very important that we want to temper the custard into the chocolate mixture, not the other way around. So what we're going to do is take that melted chocolate and again, watch out for the water. We don't want any drops of water to come in contact with the chocolate. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put that melted chocolate in here. Okay, and then we're going to incorporate the custard mixture into the chocolate. And again, a little bit at a time. Okay, you want to kind of temper it in. Don't pour it all in at once. There we go. Just about there. This is a decadent dessert. So rich, sweet. I love the flavor of a good chocolate. I like to pair it with perhaps some raspberries, a little whipped cream maybe. Okay, very good. Our batter is ready. And as you can see, we've got a lot of foam and air bubbles that are on top of the custard. Okay, so what we wanna do then is let it rest, okay? Just let it rest, let all those air bubbles come to the top, and what we'll do is we'll skim that off with a little ladle, take all that foam and air bubbles away, discard that. We don't want that to go into our molds when we cook, in the cooking process, I should say. All right, so let's talk about the cooking process. This requires a hot water bath. Okay, so we're going to bring this over and I can explain this. This can be very tedious. So the technique that I use is I will take my vessel over to the oven, pull the rack out of the oven. I'm going to set this vessel on the oven rack, okay? And then with a pitcher with my finished batter, I'm going to gently pour the batter into the molds I pretend like this is in the oven. I'm going to show you this technique. All right. So you pour the batter into the molds while it's sitting on the oven rack. Okay. Don't want to fill it up too much, about three quarters of the way. All right. And you don't want to spill any of the batter into the cooking vessel because then you're going to have custard baked onto the outside of your mold and it's going to look crappy. All right, now for the next step of this technique, while this is on the oven rack, you've just filled all of your vessels with your batter. To speed up the cooking process, you should have a pot of boiling water on the stove. Okay, so we're gonna bring that water over to the oven and gently, gently pour the boiling water into the cooking vessel. And again, you wanna be very careful not to splash any water on top of the creme brulee batter. Now you want to fill this up about halfway up the sides of the mold. And this is going to really speed up the cooking process. With molds this small, I'm going to say it's going to take no more than 20 minutes for that custard to set. Okay, got the hot water in there. Now, as you can see, we still have a few air bubbles on top of the custard. We don't want that, we want them to go away. Okay, so we wanna pop those bubbles, right? Make them go away. 
So you want a nice smooth surface in the top of this custard when it's cooked. Very good. Okay, so the reason I show you this technique is that if you try to fill the molds and put the water in the pan, imagine picking it up now and walking over to the oven trying not to spill anything. It's very tedious, okay? So this technique really works and you don't have to worry about spilling the batter into the cooking vessel. You don't have to worry about splashing the water into the chocolate. And also, you don't have to worry about that custard cooking onto the outside of the mold because you've splashed the chocolate custard into the water. You don't want that to happen. The water should be nice and clean. Okay? So we've got some of these baking right now. We're going to bring those out in a little bit. And we'll burn some sugar on top. And of course, we're going to have to taste it. And we're also going to be bringing out those sweet potato bunt cakes, pound cakes, if you will. We're going to be putting the glaze on them, and we'll have to taste those as well. Okay, so we're also going to bring out the sweet potato pound cakes. We're going to put the icing on those cakes and taste those as well. So please stay tuned, and we'll be right back for some yummy stuff. Okay, so we have our finished products out here. We have our sweet potato pound cake and our chocolate creme brulee. You know, desserts have always fascinated me. I've always had a, a big sweet tooth, and even back when I was a very young boy, I used to watch my grandmother make pie dough. She made the best pies I've ever had. And the ironic thing was that I watched her make pie dough one time when I was at the age of seven, and she was cutting the butter and the flour together on a Formica table, and I was kind of curious. I'm like, Grandma, how do you know how much butter and how much flour to mix together? And she picked up the crumbly dough in her hands and just kind of rubbed it through her fingers and looked at me and said, you just feel it. Okay. The ironic part of it is when I went to culinary school years later and we were going through these classes on how to make these desserts, we were instructed that this is a finite science and everything must be measured exactly. Well, I watched my grandmother not measure her thing, and her pie dough was pretty darn good. So anyway, um, I got a couple of these recipes from pastry chefs that I worked with at hotels and restaurants. This is one of my favorites, the sweet potato pound cake. And you can see that, you know, it's, it just pops right out of the pan. That's a beautiful thing. You can see that we put just amount, just the right amount, I should say, of batter in. We don't want it to cook up above that center post. So we hit it on the head, so to speak. So let's just pull these out of the pan, put them on a plate, okay. Those are beautiful. And the smell is just fantastic. Oh yeah. And last one, pops right out. We'll set that over there. Okay. Now for the piece de resistance, this glaze, this brown sugar glaze with butter, a little heavy cream, this stuff is the bomb. Okay, so we're just gonna take a little bit of that glaze and drizzle it over these beautiful pound cakes. Oh yeah. This is gonna be good. Yeah. Oh yeah, I just wanna kinda of drizzle it all over there, let it drip down the sides. You know, don't be shy with this glaze. It's really what makes this dessert. And again, this could be a brunch kind of item that you'd have on the Sunday afternoon. Very nice. All right, so now let's hit it with a little powdered sugar. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Nice. And I think a good accompaniment with this would maybe be some fresh strawberries would be nice. Even maybe a dollop of heavy cream. Uh, I mean, whipped cream, I should say. Okay, now the other dessert, chocolate creme brulee. As you can see, we've already burnt our sugar crust on top, right? It's set up just beautifully, cooked in that water bath at 350 degrees. Okay, and 
A nice accompaniment with this, I'd probably put maybe some fresh raspberries, a little sprig of mint. It's, good. it's a decadent dessert. You're going to love this recipe. Okay, so the proof is in the pudding, so we're going to have to taste it. So let's pull over a tasting plate. Let's try one of the pound cakes first. Oh, look at that. Very nice. And again, maybe some strawberries would be nice. A dollop of whipped cream would really finish it off. Okay, let's try a little bite of this. Mmm. Oh. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is so good. Mmm. You can really taste the nutmeg in there and the clove comes out. The sweet potato, you definitely pick that flavor up as well. It's fantastic. All right, let's try the creme brulee. So with the creme brulee, if you've burnt the sugar crust on correctly, you should get a little bit of a crunch. And that's something you want to do just before service time because that sugar will start to soften up and remelt again and it's going to be soggy. You want to have that nice, thin, crisp crust on top of the custard. So let's see how we did. Oh, do you hear that crunch? That's, that's what you want. You want that crusty caramelized sugar to give a little bit of crunch with this creamy custard. Mm. Oh my goodness. That is just so decadent. I'm going to have to try one more little bite. This is, this stuff is fantastic. You're going to love this recipe. Mm. It's important that you use a good quality chocolate. You know, probably about a 65 to 70 percent cocoa. Nice and dark and rich. You want to stay away from like a semi-sweet chocolate chip. It really makes a big difference. So, We've made some wonderful desserts today, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, it's all about making healthy, nutritious, and delicious meals at home for you and your family, and you can do it in a snack. So, we'll see you next time. Bon appetit.